simplifying fractions. By now, you know that in our set of fraction towers, we have lots of fractions that are equivalent to one half. If you take out the one half piece, you can find many different pieces in your fraction tower set that are the same height or equivalent fractions. Two fourths, three sixths, four eighths, five tenths, and six twelfths. If we're talking about simplest form, it's sort of easy to see that the one half fraction is in simplest form because it has the least number of pieces. Something that's simple is going to have small amount of pieces, not many details if we're thinking about in, um, in reading. So in this case, the one half is in the simplest form. The reason that it's in simplest form in mathematical terms is because the numerator and the denominator have one as their only common factor. If we then we, let's explain that. If we think about factors of one, well, the only number we can multiply to get one is one. And the only numbers we can multiply to get two with the prime number are one and two. And since one is their only common factor, by definition, one half is in simplest form. On the other hand, two fourths, let's show why that's not in simplest form. The factors of two are one and two, but the factors of four are one, two, and four. And since they share a common factor that's bigger than one, or a factor other than one, this fraction is not in simplest form. One way that we can get fractions into simplest form is to divide both the numerator and the denominator by common factors. For example, if we have 6 twelfths and we want to put it in simplest form, I can think about what factors do they both have in common. Well, immediately, I think they're both even numbers, so that means that 2 is a factor of both of those. So I'm going to divide by 2 on the numerator and divide the denominator by 2. And I hope you remember that really you're dividing by 1, which is going to give us an equivalent fraction. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 12 divided by 2 is 6. So 6 twelfths is equal to 3 sixths. And all we've done to show that in fraction tower form, here's the 6 twelfths, and I've simplified it one step by taking it from the 12th pieces into the 6th pieces. So now I've got 3 sixths, and I think about it, they still have another common factor. Both of them have 3 as a factor. Both of them are divisible by 3, so I'm going to divide by a one whole fraction, 3 thirds, 3 divided by 3 is 1, 6 divided by 3 is 2. And then I have, so what I've done in fraction tower form is gone from 3 6 to 1 half, and they are equivalent fractions. And then I know that because 1 half, 1 and 2 have the only common factor that they have is 1, I know that this is in simplest form. Let's do one that we can't necessarily show with fraction towers 10 thirtieths. I'm going to think, well, again, they're both even number, so 2 must be a factor of both of those numbers. So I'm going to divide my numerator by 2 and my denominator by 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5. 30 divided by 2 is 15. So 10 thirtieths is equal to 5 fifteenths. And then I have to think, do they have any more common factors? Well, they're not even, um, so 2 isn't a factor. I'm going to think about 3. Well, five, 3 is not a factor of 5. 4 is not a factor of 5, but 5, both of these numbers are divisible by 5, so I'm going to divide the numerator and the denominator by 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1, 15 divided by 5 is 3, so 10 thirtieths in simplest form is 1 third. And the way that you know you're ready to stop is this, you're, the way that you know you're done dividing, keep dividing by 1, one the one whole fraction, until 1 is the only common factor. So I divide it by a 1 whole fraction, I divide it by a 1 whole fraction. When I get to this point, 1 and 3, the only common factor they have is 1, so I know that I'm finished. This is in simplest form. There's another way that you can also simplify fractions, and that is to divide both the numerator and the denominator by their greatest common factor, and we're going to abbreviate that GCF. So if I have the, fra the fraction 8 24ths and want to simplify that, 
I'm going to think about what are the factors of 8. And you're, we're going to hear multiples and factors, and sometimes those words get confused in your brain. So I have a little um, saying that I think about. Um, when I know I have to find the factors, I think if you want to find a factor, you got to break it down. That, that reminder, breaking it down, tells me I need to get numbers that are smaller than 8. So I'm going to think about the factors of 8. You might find it helpful to find the smallest and the biggest and then work your way in towards the middle. So factors of 8, 1 times 8 makes 8, and also 2 times 4 makes 8. The only other thing I need to check is the number in between those two, which is 3, and 3 is not a factor of 8. I'm going to do the same thing with 24. If you want to find a factor, you've got to break it down. 1 times 24, then 2 times 12 is 24, 3 times 8 is 24, and the last pair, 4 times 6 is 24. We can see that 24 has lots of factors. Now I'm going to find, going back to find the greatest common factor, the biggest number that they both have in common. I'm going to work my way all the way up to 8, and I see both of them have 8 as a factor. So that's the number I'm going to divide them by. I'm going to divide the numerator by 8 and the denominator by 8, which is a one whole fraction, 8 eighths. 8 divided by 8 is 1. 24 divided by 8 is 3, so 8 24 in simplest form is 1 3rd. Let's look at a picture of what we just did. 8 out of 24 V circles are blue, but another way to look at it is to look at the rows, and I can see that one row out of three rows are blue, so this fraction is equivalent to 1 3rd. A second example, 4 tenths. If you want to use this method, your first step is to find the factors. If you want to find a factor, you got to break it down. Factors of 4, 1, and 4, and then 2 times 2. And then if you want to find the factors of 10, break it down. 1 times 10, and 2 times 5. And then I'm going to look and find the greatest common factor in their lists. And the biggest factor that they both have is 2. So I'm going to divide the numerator by 2 and the denominator by 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5. So 4 tenths simplified, or in simplest form, is 2 fifths. Here's a picture of fraction towers. You start with 4 purple pieces, which are tenths. They simplify to 2 green pieces, which is fifths. And you can see that it's simpler because it's less pieces. In books or problems or other teachers, um, th lot, there's lots of different ways to, for, to call simplest form. You might hear um, reduce the fraction, simplify the fraction, or you might hear someone say write it in lowest terms. Don't get confused though. These are all really the same terms for writing a fraction in simplest form. Let's do one final problem using both strategies, and by the, by the time you've practiced with, the, with this a couple times, I hope you'll pick one that you think works the best in most situations. If you're asked to write 1236 in lowest terms, which is another word for simplifying the fraction, you can, the first way to do it is to divide by common factors. So I'm going to start with 2 because they're both even numbers. 12 divided by 2 is 6. 36 divided by 2, well at first I'm going to think about 30 cut in half is 15, and then 6 cut in half is 3. 15 plus 3 is 18. All right. Now these are still both even numbers, so I'm going to divide by 2 again. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 18 divided by 2 is 9. Now I don't have even numbers anymore, but I do have multiples of 3, so I'm going to divide both of these by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 9 divided by 3 is 3. So 1236 in simplest form is 1 third. Well, let's look at what that's going to look like in the other method to do it, the other strategy. If you want to find a factor of 12, you've got to break it down. 1 times 12, 2 times 6, and 3 times 4. Those are the factors of 12. And then I'm going to find the factors of 36. 1 and 36, 2, and I divided it by 2 up here, I remember it was 18, 2 times 18 is 36, 
3 times 12 is 36. 4 times 9 is 36. And I've run out of room, but I know that there's one more factor, which is 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 9, 12, 18, and 36. 36 has a lot of factors. So my next step is to find the greatest common factor. I'm going to look all the way to my biggest one up here, and both of them have 12 as a common factor, so I can divide the numerator and the denominator by 12. 12 here and 12 here. 12 divided by 12 is 1. 36 divided by 12 is 3. So 12 36 in simplest form is 1 third. Same answer I got up here. I hope that you see a connection in both of these. In this problem, I divided by a 2, I divided by another 2, and then I divided by 3. And when I multiply 2 times 2 times 3, I end up getting 12, which is exactly what I divided by here when I found the greatest common factor. So either way, you're really doing the same steps. Here you're pulling out one factor at a time. Here you're pulling out the greatest common factor altogether. But I hope that you get that these are related strategies and either one will work just, um, just as well as the other to simplify fractions.